Hi everybody, Kate Krause here at the Research Medical Library at the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Today we're going to do a quick overview of the new PRISMA 2020 flow diagram for systematic reviews and meta-analysis, and how it differs from the previous version. If you're not familiar with PRISMA already, you might want to watch our 10-minute video on YouTube, Introduction to PRISMA. We have a lot of other helpful webinars available at our Research Medical Library YouTube channel. The new PRISMA 2020 flow diagram was actually published in March of 2021. It updates the older 2009 version. You can find it at www.prisma-statement.org or simply by googling PRISMA for systematic reviews. The flow diagram is on the right hand side under key documents. In the older PRISMA, there was only one version of the flow diagram. PRISMA 2020 now gives you four different versions to choose from. The first two are for systematic reviews. The second two are for updates to already published systematic reviews. Let's take a look at the first one. I'm going to use a version where I've highlighted the changes to the new version from the old version. The flow diagram lists the numbers of articles you found and explains how many you eliminated at the title abstract screening phase and the full text screening phase, all the way down to the final number of studies you decided to include in your systematic review. The new version is pretty similar to the older one, but four boxes have changed and require more detail than in the previous version. In the top two boxes, you list how many articles you found and how many duplicates you removed. In the first box on the left, you now have to give information about the citations you found in registers as well as databases. There's also a note at the bottom that recommends that you identify the number of articles you found in each database and register, not just one number total. That's a new addition to the PRISMA 2020 flow diagram. The box next to it is completely different than the older version, and in it you have to give more detail about how you removed duplicate citations, whether you did it manually or whether you used automation tools that uh, do the re duplicate removal for you. The next two boxes are where you list the number of articles you removed at the title and abstract screening phase. These are the same as the older version. In the third row, you list the number of the full text articles that you were unable to obtain. This is something that's new also. Um, it's there because sometimes you just can't get your hands on every single article uh, that you identified in your search of the databases. In the fourth row, you list the number of articles you removed at the full text screening phase. This is pretty much the same as the older version. And in the last box at the bottom, you list the number of studies you finally included in your systematic review. The only change here is that you also have to state if the number of studies differed from the number of articles. These can be different sometimes. So let's take a look at an actual example of a PRISMA 2020 flow diagram. I think it'll make more sense. So here we have uh, just an example with some numbers. So you can kind of, uh, let's walk through how it goes from the top to the bottom. So here we have the numbers of articles you found in the databases and now separately the registers. Also, as the guidelines recommended, you can see here that we have separated out the number of articles we found in each of the various databases and registers. And this totals 4,057. In the box next to it, we list the number of duplicates removed manually and with software. In this example, you can see that they removed 972 duplicate citations and they did not use automation software to help them. This leaves us with 3,085 citations. Uh, at this second row here, this is where we screen what we have found just by looking at the titles and abstracts. And you can see here in this example, they have removed a great number of them. That usually happens. 
2,881. You don't need to list the reasons why you remove any of the citations at this point. In the third row, this is where we do, um, actually this is where we show how many of the full text articles we were unable to retrieve. Sometimes it's just not possible to get the full text of every single article. This is a, a row that's new. We did not have to do this before. The fourth row is exactly the same as the older Prisma version. You list the number of articles you removed at the full text screening phase, and this time you do have to list the reasons why articles were removed. We can see here that they removed a total of 186 at this screening phase, and that left them with 15 studies to include in the systematic review. Uh, the one change in this last box here at the bottom is that uh, you can see here that there was a difference in the number of reports about the studies and the actual studies themselves. So that's the standard PRISMA 2020 flow diagram, but there are other versions available. Going back to our PRISMA website here, this second version is a little bit more complicated. It's basically the same thing uh, as what we were just looking at right here on this left-hand side under this orange bar, identifications of studies via databases and registers. That's exactly the same thing. What's new here is this column on the right under the orange bar, identifications of studies through other methods. So not everything, uh, not all the studies are listed in the indexes, and you can sometimes find studies by searching websites, organizations, and doing citation chaining. These are all listed here in this top box. Citation chaining or citation searching is when you look through the references of the studies that you've selected to include in your systematic review. Sometimes in their references, they list other studies that you didn't retrieve by searching the journal databases. You take these studies that you identified through other means, you go through the same process of title abstract screening, then full text screening, and then you simply add the two together at the bottom. This just identifies the articles you found through websites, organizations, and other means. The next two items in the PRISMA website are flow diagrams you would use when you update a previously published systematic review. Let's take a look at the third one in the list. Once again, this is basically the same flow diagram that we initially looked at right here on the right hand side. But you can see it has an extra column on the left now for the studies that were included in the original systematic review that you are updating. And basically all you do is uh, you perform your systematic review and then you add the new results to the older results right here at the bottom box. The fourth option is the same thing, but it includes an extra column if you've identified studies by searching other places in addition to journal indexes organizations, websites, and citation chainings. So those are the four new versions of the PRISMA 2020 flow diagram. There's a link on the page for an online app right here that will generate a diagram for you. You can also just download one of these Word documents and fill in the boxes manually. I sometimes find that that's the easier method. Since you're using this diagram and including it in the text of your manuscript, not in an appendix or supplementary online content, it usually goes in the actual text of your manuscript. Uh, but since it's something that someone else has created, you need to include a reference for it in your manuscript. You don't want to cite this website here, the PRISMA website, but instead you want to cite one of the many open access journals that it appeared in. You can click right here, for information about citing and using PRISMA, and then click on the PRISMA statement, 
and it lists the many journals where the article appeared announcing the new Prisma 2020 flow diagram and checklist. I usually just stick with BMJ, the first one listed. And that's about it for the Prisma 2020 flow diagram. We have more information on systematic reviews in our library's online help guide. Just go to the Research Medical Library's website at mdanderson.org library, hover over Find Information, and select Research Guides. You'll find a lot of really helpful information on research, writing, and publishing, a whole lot of things, using endnotes, finding particular types of information, and a lot more. But right now, we just want to scroll down to Literature Searching and Systematic Reviews. Then click on Systematic Reviews again. You can see here that this help guide has information on a lot of things that uh, relate to systematic reviews. Uh, the guidelines, how to make the protocol, how to select the studies, how to appraise the studies, just uh, everything you ever wanted to know uh, in different uh, parts. So I hope that helps explain the Prisma 2020 flow diagram. If you have any questions, MD Anderson staff and students can email me at kjkraus at mdanderson.org. Thanks, everybody.